why the workplace is a lab for emotional healing. This is the summary of chapter five from Healing at Work by Susan Winchester. So why do we need emotional healing? A lot of us would have grown up with a lot of scars, childhood memories that might make us consciously or unconsciously behave in certain ways. We might have built a set of beliefs that impact our present. And there are many examples that we can take to understand this, but a simple one could be, let's say we seek out for a lot of approval. If we do that, then we may end up driving ourselves crazy at work just because we constantly seek out that approval that we started seeking out in the childhood. Overwork, driving yourself crazy, expectations from outside. These are all emotional baggages that need healing. And so isn't this counterintuitive title which says, hey, workplace as a lab for emotional healing? Because workplace is considered to be a place where a lot of wounding happens, right? You build more scars. There's this great resignation, great reshuffle, call it you may be. But there's lots of that happening. And so can we transform that from wounding to healing? That's the crux of this chapter. So what if we could use the triggers at workplaces? Because it's a constant nine hour a day that we spend at workplace. What if we could use all of those triggers to be more mindful, to become more cognizant of the actions that we take? Because there are lots of upsides that the workplace has. The workplace gives you a place in the world where you have a sense of identity, where you meet a lot of people that what if you could be so glad to meet them every day, five days a week? What if you felt a sense of belonging at work? What if you felt that you were able to optimize your gifts that you have, your skills, and you are able to give the world all of your life's gifts? What if you were greatly financially rewarded, your job was secure, you were celebrated for your accomplishments, and where you find that the time that you're spending on this planet Earth is meaningful. What if your workplace could be that? And that's the goal of this chapter five from this great book, Healing at Work. What if we could transform our workplace where we get all of these things? So to do that, we need to understand some new mental, mod mental models. We need to understand some new concepts. What are those new concepts? So the first one that the author introduces earlier on in this book is ASDPs. So all those people who require emotional healing are ASDPs, adult survivor of a damaged past. And the second mental model is bumper car moments. These are the moments where the past overtakes or overpowers us consciously or unconsciously, certain belief systems that we unconsciously trigger in ourselves. And those are the bumper car moments, like the moments where you, you just behave in certain way because of certain wiring that you have. And then neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity tells us that we can rewire our brain. We can rewire the neural pathways of our brain to take advantage of the plastic nature, the changeable nature of the brain. We can be more calmer, more happier, more focused, more productive, more optimistic, and feel overall sense of abundance and joy because we can rewire our brain. So even if we are ASDP, we can actually become a much better adult by using this concept or recognizing that we can rewire our brain. And that these bumper car movements are triggers where we consciously will rewire our brain. 
And finally, positive psychology. So when you have to rewire, what do you do? You do it in a, using the concept of positive psychology. You de displace all the bad wiring that's happened with an overgrowing accumulation of good experiences. So for example, if you are constantly getting impacted by things at work, we practice equanimity. If we are constantly too much into the weeds and not really stepping back, then we, we rewire stepping back. If we are always pessimistic about the outcome, we rewire optimism. If we don't have compassion and empathy, and we don't care about anyone, we start to care. So if you find someone at work who doesn't show empathy, that's a trigger for you. And what if you are also behaving that way, you could actually rewire that to become more compassionate. So transforming all of those triggers so that you become a better human being by mentally rewiring yourself, that's the crux of this entire chapter. So if we understand these mental models, then let's look at what the workplace has to offer because it's a lab. It's a lab that gives you so many things. And this is based on the theory of well-being which the author Martin Seligman says it's more important than happiness because you can't be happy all the time, but you can be doing well. You could be flourishing all the time. So he gives more importance to well-being than happiness. And he says there are five foundations and each of these foundations are available at work. And these foundations are the foundations for well-being and they're available at work. So positive emotion. What if we could um, have at workplace a trusting environment where we are not hyper vigilant but we are we have we we can trust our bosses to have our back we have congenial workplaces where we have good work that's challenging but it's not toxic and stressful so work has the possibility to provide us the positive emotion and as leaders it's our responsibility to provide that positive emotion, which is one of the five foundations. The second one is engagement. We all see engagement surveys at work, which constantly ask us, how engaged are you as an employee? Would you recommend your company to your friend? How fulfilling is your engagement with your manager? Does your manager ask you about your career progression? It's important foundation for fulfillment. And so work has the opportunity to give you fulfilling work where you do great work, quality work, where you are constantly improving your skills, you feel proud about the work that you've done, you have set clear expectations of what's expected out of you and you've set expectations clear for what you expect out of, out of your subordinates. You feel a sense of safety. So these are the two foundations already out of five, positive emotion, engagement, positive relationships. What if everyone that you worked with at work were nice people? where you found newer professional relationships with people that you deeply engage with, where it's not shallow relationship of, okay, you're done with work, it's done. Work provides a sense of meaning and identity, huge. It's not just administrative work that you do, but you do something that's meaningful, that benefits mankind. And finally, the fifth foundation is achievement or acquiring new learnable skills that you can use at life. So you can, you get to set meaningful goals, you can set an objective, you pursue it until you get it. So you get a fulfillment, a sense of competence, capability, you, you think you can do it. So the work actually provides a place for all of this. So what if we could use neuroplasticity and every time we have a negative emotion, we change that to a positive emotion. Every time we have a negative engagement, um, experience at work, we change that to a positive, engaging experience. Every time we have a bad experience or relationship, we change that to a positive one. Every time we give work, we provide the context around why this is important, who is it helping, and we provide a way in which we help our people grow. If we did these five foundations, then people would be doing well at work. And when you're doing well at work, you are healing yourself the ASPDs, we are no longer ASPDs if we are healing at work. So that's the foundation of this entire chapter where if we can transform the workplace with all of these five foundations, 
and we'll be much better off. The employees working in our team will be better off and we'll have an engaging workplace that everyone finds meaningful and happiness follows because everyone's flourishing, they're doing well. Thanks.